I'm Warren Smith with the World News Group. Laura Waters Henson didn't start out to be a filmmaker, but through a series of unlikely events, some of which we'll hear about, not only did she become a filmmaker, but she found herself in Rwanda, telling an amazing story of reconciliation that ultimately won her a Student Academy Award. When she's not making or promoting her movies, Laura lives in Washington with her husband, Tommy, who's the pastor of a church just a few miles north of Capitol Hill. I traveled to Washington to chat with Laura in, where else, a movie theater. I began by asking her to tell me about her path to filmmaking. My start as a filmmaker, I guess it started when I decided to go to film school. Um, I you know, had gone to college and studied communication and political science and um, ended up coming to Washington, D.C. to do uh, an internship and a fellowship program and um, had kind of a series of events in my life. I had a relationship breakup, a, a, an engagement breakup, and I kind of had a come to Jesus moment about what was I going to do with my life. I thought I was going to be in politics or in PR, something along those lines. and. Um, just started really asking myself, you know, what do I really care about? What do I really love? And what am I actually kind of good at? And it all sort of came together in this idea of documentary film. And it sounded like a crazy idea to me. I didn't know any documentary filmmakers. I'd never uh, really shot with a video camera except for my home movies in the fifth grade. And yet um, this kind of blend of storytelling and journalism and photography and music and all the things that the components that come together in filmmaking uh, sounded really intriguing to me. And I ended up coming to American University here in DC and where they have a really strong documentary film program and that was kind of the beginning. As We Forgive, the movie for which she won a Student Academy Award, started out as her master's thesis. As We Forgive is a documentary that tells the story of two Rwandan women's journey to reconcile with the men who killed their families uh, during the 1994 genocide. One of the things that uh, you know I noticed right away about the movie when I saw it was the narration of Mia Farrow, uh, which uh, you know tends to elevate the movie from something that is not a student project to one that that feels more like a professional project. How did she get involved in the project? The rough cut of my film made it to the daughter of Congressman Frank Wolf. And she in turn talked to her father, he's a congressman from Virginia, and he just reached out and said, well, I'd love to help this young filmmaker and let's have a meeting. So I was floored that a congressman would even want to help me in any way. And so I ended up going to his office and telling him about the project. And he suggested Mia Farrow and that he had worked with her a number of times on issues related to Darfur and that she was a really passionate um, advocate for victims of genocide. The movie has a scale well beyond most student projects. I asked Laura how she had the confidence to take on a project of such scope. Yeah, <laughs> well I think it was really good that I'd never made a feature film before because if I had known how hard it would be, I don't know that I would have attempted it, but um, I think it was that sort of innocence of filmmaking that really gave, you know, I just went into it without fear. I was in my master's program at the time and not at all even thinking about uh, making a film. I just thought I'm going to go take some photographs, learn about Rwanda. And while I was there, I began hearing stories of perpetrators of genocide being released from prison, thousands and thousands of killers coming home to face the people whose families they had killed, and that the government of Rwanda was asking people to forgive the killers. And this just, I couldn't believe I had never heard the story. I couldn't believe it was not in the news. And um, I, I had a moment on that trip where I just felt like God said to me, this is your story and you've got to do whatever it takes to tell the story of radical forgiveness to the world that's happening here in this country. And, I, and at that point, I hadn't even really met anybody outside of Bishop John Richihana, who's an Anglican bishop, who had ever even forgiven anybody. But he said, there are a lot of stories like mine here. You need to come back and hear those stories. While Laura was learning about forgiveness and reconciliation in Rwanda, another story of forgiveness was unfolding in her own life between her and her future husband, Tommy. Right after I filmed As We Forgive, which was in the summer of 2006, my ex-fiance ended up uh, coming back into my life. We had been broken up for about five years. And um, I wondered all along while I was in Rwanda and meeting these people who'd 
forgiven on such a grand, grand scale. You know, how, how might God use this story in some small way in my own life? And uh, so a month after shooting the film, I end up getting this call from my ex-fiance. And he, um, you know, asked for forgiveness and wanted to, to see if I might be interested in getting back together. And, um, you know, it was just one of the most peaceful moments of my life where I saw God's plan so clearly. And that doesn't happen very often in life where you just know that you're right exactly where you should be. And um, I think there's no coincidence that we ended up reconciling just really weeks after I got back from filming the story of these Rwandans forgiving. And so um, about 10 months later, we got married and now about to celebrate our five year anniversary. And you're expecting your second child. Yes, I am currently six months pregnant with our second boy. And you're also, um, forgive me for saying it this way, pregnant with a new project as well, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Very, uh -huh. I'm twice pregnant. I have two projects right now. Uh, Mama, and it's appropriately called Mama Rwanda, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Can you say a little about that? Sure. Um, Mama Rwanda is a new documentary that I shot last summer, and it tells the story of women who have gone through, they have their own stories of genocide, but now um, women who are mothers, who have large families that are primarily the breadwinner for their family, um, who have decided to become entrepreneurs, to, to take whatever little um, money or resources they have and to build a business by themselves. And I, I really wanted to tell the story of, of economic renewal that's happening in Rwanda. You cannot believe the type of growth. It's got, Rwanda has one of the fastest growing economies in the world right now. And so I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to tell that story from the perspective of women that you know I connect with because they're mothers, but who are also trying to make um, a better life for themselves, for their children, and for their communities. Laura has yet another film underway called Dog Days. It is a story of the American dream told through the eyes of uh, people trying to make their livelihoods on the streets of the nation's capital through street vending, hot dog vending. And there is a, an incredibly fascinating underworld of hot dog vending in the nation's capital that I see as kind of a microcosm of uh, the bigger story of what's happening in our larger uh, economy. You know, what does the American dream look like in an age of such uncertainty? And does the American dream really exist? And in what form? And what do people do when they're facing such disappointment and failure in their lives, and yet they try to get up every single day and to make a living on their own, to not depend on other people? And so we're telling that through the eyes of these people who get up every day and sell hot dogs for 25 years to put their four kids through college in America. So entrepreneurship, um, the American dream, the, the promise of capitalism, I guess you could say, those yeah. are, are themes, but they're just ideas until you really find the incarnation of those ideas in these people. Um, say a little bit about just the storytelling process. How, how do you find the stories in Rwanda, for example, that you uh, end up telling or the ones here uh, in, in Washington, D.C.? I think the process of finding characters is really one of the most fun parts of the whole thing because it, it in documentary, you can't uh, need a script. You really have to flourish in an environment where anything can happen. And I love that type of environment. And I love that just talking to one person can lead to talking to another and to another and then finding that right character for your movie. And I think these things happen really organically and, and hopefully uh, providentially led. And that was definitely the case in As We Forgive. As we were finishing, I asked Laura if she had any advice for young filmmakers or young people generally trying to figure out what they should do with their lives. I would say for people just to be really honest about what they love, what they're good at, what they're bad at, and to talk to people they trust and try to come up with a plan. Because I think that you can do it. You can do, um, if you're willing to make sacrifices and to not be comfortable all the time and um, to risk a lot, you can do anything you really want to do if, uh, if you're really motivated. Laura Waters Henson continues to be fruitful in more ways than one. Since our conversation, she's given birth to her second child, a boy. Dog Days is finished and will release in 2013. Work on Mama Rwanda proceeds and Laura said she hopes that movie will be out in 2014. Reporting for World News Group's New Christian Voices series, I'm Warren Smith.